Now the other thing is vernix, which is something I, I hesitate to talk about because I don't know much about it, except I know it covers babies. It's that waxy layer that covers babies when they're born. And it turns out that if you look at the thickness of vernix on human babies when they're born, it's really quite thick. And it's certainly much thicker than any other terrestrial mammal. But it is the same thickness as you find in these and other marine mammals. So whether there's a case to be made that as people have lived by the sea for many, many years, that the babies that have done best are the ones from the mothers who've produced the most vernix and maybe they've engaged in water births, then maybe, maybe. It's all speculation, but it's intriguing. Then the other thing is in religions, almost every religion of the world has got some strong association with water, baptism, uh, Hindus and rivers and those sort of things. So it's an intriguing area to speculate on and, and to think about. Water seems to be very, very important to human beings. How can we improve our health and well-being in the future? Well, just to go back to this theme of our disconnection from nature, if you, do, if you disconnect animals from nature, they do funny things. So if you take fish and put them in a tank in the laboratory, in confined conditions, and then monitor their movement, they do this kind of thing. They don't like it. They behave abnormally. And that's true for many organisms you bring from the natural environment and confine in a laboratory. If you do that with many things like mice and put them in uh, conditions removed again from any kind of natural habitat or even artificial natural habitat, one of the things you do is they feed excessively. So that's disconnecting fish and mice from nature and many other species. So guess what happens when you take human beings and disconnect them from nature? They get depressed. And depression, the WHO has now identified as being in the top three of all the diseases in the world. On every continent, it'll be in the top three by 2030. One in five people in the European Union has got some form of psychiatric disorder, ranging from depression to being completely out of it. So it seems there's at least a correlation with moving away from intimate contact with the natural environment, uh, moving away from contact to an increase in the incidence of psychiatric disorders. What's the other thing that people do? They get obese. And obesity is just exploding uh, about 14 billion pounds a year. It's costing the country at the moment. By 2030, it's estimated it will cost us about 40 billion pounds a year. And it will reduce life expectancy of children so they might not live as long as their parents and so on. So this disconnection with nature is important. And this disconnection from water on aquatic environments may be really important. So, okay, nearly done. Five minutes. Yep, okay, I'll crack on. So this is the information about depression being in the top three diseases by 2030. Uh, all the countries of the Western world, obesity is increasing dramatically as, and it correlates with people living in cities. What health benefits can, can we get? And I'll just crack on through this. How can, so one of the ways to overcome obesity and one of the ways to help people feel better psychologically there's evidence accumulating, it's good to get them out into nature. How can we motivate people to spend more time in the natural environment? One way is to engage them with the coast, we've found. Not just getting them into gardens and fields and parks, but the coast is particularly powerful. So we started a project called the Blue Gym. And the Blue Gym is a slightly wacky campaign, and I, it is a bit unusual because this is the website and it's not a typical website for a research project from academics. But it's, it's promoting campaigns for everything from rock pool rambles, coastal walks, swimming, sailing, surfing, kayaking, anything you can do on the water, coastal photography, coastal painting, anything that gets people outside. And we've created this as a social networking site like Facebook, which some people in the room will know what, what it is. Um, I'm not entirely sure. But, um, so it's a way of connecting people up and allowing them to join together to engage in communal activities associated with the water. It facilitates them joining into these activities. But it's, the Blue Gym is not just a campaign, it's a research project too, because we then can make measurements on these groups of people 
before and after, and the key to it is rigorous scientific studies, randomized controlled trials, intervention studies, mechanistic studies to understand what it is about going onto a seashore or being associated with a natural environment that really helps to alleviate these uh, problems. Of course, it's not just the sea, it works with rivers, lakes and canals. This was just to show that people, this is 1950, number of people living around the Mediterranean, by 1995, lots more people living around the Mediterranean in these blobs. And if you look today, it's, it's even more dramatic. So, in conclusion, really, then, there are interconnections between the environment and human health. The natural environment is, seems to be profoundly important for human health. Water in that natural environment seems to be very, very important. So, outside the body, water is important. Inside the body, as I said right at the very beginning, it's really important because water is the medium into which foods and pharmaceuticals and uh, drugs of, and toxicants are dispersed and travel around the body. And so water can be good, but it can also be extremely unpleasant. After floods, the biggest human health problem after floods is psychiatric disorders caused by the fact that you think your house might get flooded again or that you lost all the photographs of your family never to be seen again in the flood. Terrible psychological traumas after floods. Um, I could go on about all kinds of pollutants in the marine environment that get transferred to humans, but I won't. So I think I'll, I'll stop there and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much.